Hi, I'm Tessa Davis. I'm a paediatric emergency medicine consultant. Today I'm going to talk about finger extensor tendon injuries. I'm going to go through the anatomy basics and how to assess and evaluate the injuries as well as how to classify them. I will make some separate videos about some specific types of extensor tendon injuries too. So first off, the anatomy. So distal to the MCPJ, the common extensor tendon, it divides into three slips. There's one central band and there's two lateral bands. The central slip inserts at the base of the middle phalanx and the two lateral bands, they extend along the radial and ulnar margins of the middle phalanx and they come together at the distal third of the middle phalanx. And this forms the terminal extensor tendon and that tendon inserts at the base of the distal phalanx. So you've got the central slip that extends the middle phalanx at the PIPJ and then you've got the terminal extensor tendon which extends at the DIPJ. And in the thumb you've got the extensor pollicis longus which extends the thumb at the IPJ. So how do we evaluate these injuries? Well, the extensor tendons are assessed by applying pressure to the back of the finger while the patient is attempting active extension. To test the extensor pollicis longus, you ask the patient to place their hand flat on the table and lift their thumb up against resistance. And there's one more test you should know, which is Elson's test, and that's testing for a central slip injury. I'll do a separate video about these injuries, but for now, you should know that this is an assessment you should make so you don't miss a central slip injury. For Elson's test, ask the patient to bend the affected finger at the PIPJ 90 degrees over the edge of a table and ask them to extend the middle phalanx against resistance. If the central slip's intact, so a negative test, then extension is really strong and the distal phalanx remains floppy because the extension force is now placed entirely on maintaining extension of the PIPJ and so the lateral bands can't act distally in this position. But if you've got a rupture of the central slip, so a positive test, you'll have weak PIPJ extension and the DIP will extend abnormally and the distal phalanx will become rigid. There's also a modified version of Elson's test. So for this, you get the patient to put the uninjured and injured fingers, the same finger on uh, opposite hands, together knuckle to knuckle in 90 degrees uh, with PIPJ flexion and you have each middle phalanx pressed against each other and you ask the patients to extend both DIP joints. In a negative test, a normal test, so the top one, the joints are symmetrically flexed. But in a positive test, so where you've got a central slip injury, the injured DIPJ extends more for the reasons we discussed previously. So to classify them, they can be divided into nine anatomical zones. An easy way to remember it is that the odd number zones are located over the joints and the even number ones are located over the bones. And tendon injuries are categorised according to these zones. So injuries in zone 1, the DIPJ, and zone 3, the PIPJ, cause some unique injury patterns and we'll talk about them in a separate video. It's worth noting here that the thumb also has a unique classification system because it's obviously only got two bones, so one less phalanx than the other fingers. So we've looked at the basics of anatomy, at how to assess evalu and evaluate extensor tendon injuries in the finger and also the classification. See DFTB's post by Sinead Fox for some more info. Thank you.